All right, take it away, Gretchen. Okay, I'm going to start all over. Hello, fellow Olympus members. Uh, this I'm Gretchen Robinson, and I'm going to start this meeting today a little late because we were trying to figure out how to record. So welcome, everybody. And I want to tell you that the theme of today is spring into action. And as you all know, it took a little springing into action last night to get the meeting together. But it all worked out so beautifully because we have great members who just respond so wonderfully. It was really helpful. And spring into action was just the first words I thought of when I thought, hmm, I better jump in and do something. So that, I mean, that's the only reason I picked that theme, but it's a pretty good theme because you have to show up in order to act or in order to experience a situation at all, just show up and spring in there and, and go and be there and just do it. And then you just have a lot of fun after that. Usually that's what I experienced in Toastmasters. Lots of fun. So that's the theme today. And our word of the day is going to be, oh, Chris is going to tell us that. And we don't have any guests today, unfortunately. We love it when we have guests. But what we'll do, I'll do is introduce the officials, the meeting officials today. And Chris is our first meeting official that'll tell us what his duty is today as our grammarian. Normally, I pride myself in collecting every single filler word that anybody says. But today, I'm going to take a little uh, thing out of Gretchen's book and try to find good phrases, things that you're doing well, more. If somebody goes way off in every other word's a filler word. I'll probably mention that. But other than that, I'm looking for the good stuff, along with using the word of the day, which is fever. And anybody who's spent the last year on these Zoom calls, other calls like this where you're stuck in the building, and, and if you've noticed, there's at least twice as many meetings as you used to have, and they seem to last a lot longer. And it's true. If you check and you go back uh, before COVID, you'll find you had not nearly as many meetings. Because people, I think, want to somehow connect, and they can't. This is it. The only way they have now is through the media. And so fever, you know, it's beautiful out. The weather's great. There's anybody who doesn't want to be outside rather than inside, you have a fever and you better get checked out. So the word of the day is fever. I'm going to emphasize more good phrases, use of the word fever. And I will note if you're kind of go overboard on filler words. Other than that, that's it. Thank you. Perfect. Love it. All right, let's be sure and use the word of the day. It takes a little bit of thought and focus, even though it's a word that we're very familiar with. Also brings to mind spring fever. We don't have to experience it anymore because spring is here. So, yay. And we're all inside in a meeting. <laughs> our next meeting official is our timer vote counter. That will be Michael today, Michael. Thank you, Gretchen. Um, my name is Michael Wynn, and I'll be the timer vote counter today. My job is to time all the speaking portions of the meeting, including the speech table topics and the evaluations. So for the speech, it's five to seven minutes today. At five minutes, you'll get the green bottle here. It's a Costco brand allergy medication, and it's good for hay fever if you have it. At yellow or at six minutes, you'll get this yellow legal notepad. And at seven minutes, you'll get these takeout containers from Panda Express. This was a family bundle and yes, I ate it all myself. So, and at table topics, you'll have one to two minutes to, to complete them. At one minute, you'll get the green, uh, 1.30 yellow and two minutes the red with 30 seconds to wrap up. And evaluator, uh, evaluators today, Evan, you'll have two to three minutes at two minutes. You'll get the green, two and a half the yellow, three minutes the red, 
with 30 seconds to wrap up. I'll also be tallying the votes. So after the table topics portion, you can email me or, or not email me, message me the your favorite table topics person. And thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot, Michael. Very thorough. I like your prompts. Actually, the yellow looks kind of white, but I think Debbie will notice that just fine. Joke Master is next. Lonnie, we get a joke from you. All right, thank you, fellow Toastmasters. This, uh, I went on vacation this uh, last weekend and I was able to visit my dad who has been, he lost his leg last year. And so he's been pretty much stuck at home recuperating, but it was pretty awesome. We had a fever to get him, get him out of the house and he was able to get into my car for the first time. So we took a long road trip. We went and got some root beer floats, drove around the old hometown. And on our way to uh, this park, Willow Grove Beach on the Columbia River, we took the back road. We went by this huge Longview cemetery that I usually never drive by. And my dad turns to me and he's like, you know how many people up there are dead? And I'm like, no, how many? And he looks at me and he says, all of them dead serious. And it was hilarious. So I wanted to share that, that joke that he told me. He, it was great to see a smile on his face and uh, get him out of the house. It's been way too long and we had a fever and, mm -hmm. and uh, excited for, for future road trips. So thank you. No, oh, thank you, Lonnie. That was great. Did you say you went, it's in Longview that you went? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm from long view like michael Where's michael yeah yep. how about that cool well i wish your dad well so a year ago he lost his leg because he takes a long time to get used to that doesn't it yeah well on with the speaking portion of our meeting we have a great speaker and i don't mind saying that even after her icebreaker just her icebreaker it showed us what an extraordinary speaker she already is and how she puts it together a speech was phenomenal to me. Yeah, it really was. Debbie is going to be doing the first of two evaluation and feedback speeches in Pathways. The first, and you can do a speech on anything you want to in this part of the curriculum. So she will be doing a speech and then she'll get an evaluation and then she will take the feedback under consideration and her next speech, she will use that feedback, really focus on that feedback to improve her next speech. That's, that's what the evaluation and feedback speech is all about. The title of her speech is Empathy versus Sympathy. I recently, well, in the past year or so, learned the difference of that. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about that, Debbie. So Debbie, go right ahead and talk to us about empathy versus sympathy. My computer has a delay. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. I am pleased to be here today to talk to you about empathy and sympathy. How many of you feel like these are the same thing? Show of hands. Are these the same thing? A lot of times we think of that. I, I, I don't hear the word empathy that often or not in my past. I, you hear sympathy all the time. So let's dive into their meanings. Sympathy defined is sharing the, sharing the feelings of another and actually experiencing their pain. When somebody dies, we send a sympathy card. The funny thing about that is, do we really feel sympathy? <laughs> Or is it just a nice gesture? It's just something we do. Um, sympathy is actually taking on those feelings and feeling that, crying with them because you feel that pain. Empathy, on the other hand, is understanding the feeling. So you got sharing the feeling and understanding the feeling. So empathy is understanding the feelings of another, uh, but not necessarily sharing those feelings. You project out that you can imagine how they might feel based on what you know about the person, and despite even having the feelings. And it's something that you doesn't normally come natural to you. 
to pe most people don't naturally feel empathy. Uh, you basically put yourself in their shoes. It's perspective taking. And when you take on the perspective of another, it fuels connection with that person. It's a vulnerable choice to seek understanding, the, to seek to understand where someone is, someone is coming from is very vulnerable. How often is somebody, you know, you've seen somebody that's depressed or they come to you and they're confiding in, in you about some problem they're having and they're really distressed about it and you really don't know how to connect. What do we do? We put this little shield up over us because we don't know, what, we don't feel what they're feeling and we just smile and kind of go our own way. But I'm just going to encourage you today to just let's tear down that shield, let's tear down that wall. If you don't feel what they're feeling, then start diving into yourself and find a place inside you that can connect with them without actually feeling what they're feeling. So putting yourself in their shoes. Um, let's see. Oh, have you ever been, heard the word, can I just get a little sympathy, please? What, what you're really asking for is, can I get you to understand me? Can I get some empathy? But I, I never say, can, I, can you be a little more empathetic? We say, we say, can you be sympathetic? You cannot exactly, you cannot expect another person to naturally feel what you're feeling. Um, so you, just, you just want to offer some understanding of where you're coming from. Here's a couple of examples that I have. In 2017, I lost a very, very close aunt of mine to a freak mutated um, fever. <laughs> well, she had a lot of fever because it was some kind of a freak mutated infection that went on for like four or five months and she never, she never recovered. She, it killed her. I experienced deep sympathy and I cried with my mom because my mom was very close to her and I cried with my cousin. I felt the pain, but I also... Uh, I had to deep, dig deep down inside me and feel the empathy because my cousin still, four years later, she's still calling me and crying about, you know, not having her mom there. And not, I know how my mom to talk to. I can't actually sympathize with those feelings because I still have my mom. I still have my parents. But I can dig down deep inside me and say, if that was my mom, I, I can feel how, I can see how you're feeling. I can share that connection with you because I put myself in her shoes. Or if you've lost somebody to cancer or someone's you know, confiding in you that they've lost somebody to cancer or COVID, uh, you, you, you might feel a sadness but, and offer some sympathy, but if you can't feel that sadness, at least you can offer empathy. You've never lost someone close to you, you can at least say, what if that was my dad that died of COVID? I've had to offer this, not, I've not had to offer this. I've offered empathy to, there's a man at, at DOT where I work uh, who lost his father to COVID. A very similar situation that I have. His father was uh, high risk with some, they just recovered from lung cancer treatments. And his mother had brought it home and they both got it and his father died. So I have not experienced that, but I put myself right in his shoes and I was able to, actually cry with him and you know I, I did feel the feelings because I showed empathy I said if that was my dad how would I feel but that's kind of the difference between empathy and sympathy okay okay so I uh, another topic that I, I mean another little pinch of that is I'm a fixer I'm a mom I'm a grandma I'm a fixer and when I my daughter calls up with some kind of a crisis, which is seems like it's more often than it should be with either her kids or her husband, or this week it was a dog that they were adopting from Afghanistan that didn't work out. So she's very upset about these things. And I tend to just, as soon as she calls, I'm on guard, I'm ready to go with my advice, my, my guidance, my what ifs, um, and what she really needs is my listening ear. So, so often she said, mom, I don't need you to fix it. I just want you to just to listen. So I'm going to offer you some, some advice, just a few tips on ways to develop empathy in ourselves. First of all, simply listen. Simply listen to what's being said without interruption. Give your full attention. If you don't share the feelings that are being expressed and be able to offer sympathy, dig deep in your heart, into your soul, and find an experience some way that you can connect to that person. 
and where they're coming from. Connection aids the healing of the pain. And you don't have to say anything. Just say, I really don't know what to say right now. I'm just glad you're talking. I'm glad you're telling me. And don't try to put a silver lining on it by saying, at least, you know, you lost your baby. I'm so sorry. At least you know you can get pregnant. Or at least leave out, at least out of the conversation. They're not looking for fixes and cures, and they're not looking for a silver lining. They're experiencing pain. And you need to stay out of judgment and lay aside your preconceived prejudices and simply be a listening ear. I want to share a couple of resources that I've, I'm in a couple of mentoring programs through um, our, our agency and that we're working through these books. I've got Dare to Lead, Brene Brown. Anybody familiar with Brene Brown? Show of hands. Uh, great. She's got a great video on YouTube. It's called, it's on empathy, three minute video. I encourage everybody to watch it. It's, it's wonderful. And then also Brave, Leader, Brave Leadership by Kimberly Davis, another one that covers a lot on empathy and how to, how to bring empathy into the workplace, which is very, very important. I feel that we've got a new, just a new culture that we're, we're trying to build and it can be developed through showing empathy for the people we work with and to the people that we live with and the people that we encounter. I hope that you will all work on building and developing and cultivating empathy for others in your lives. Thank you. Yay, Debbie! Great subject that I know we can all relate to. Oh man, that last part, it was such good advice for me because, oh, do I rush into fixing at a fevered pitch when somebody, especially kids, <laughs> and I've learned how to listen, listen. It's just that connection they're after. Thanks so much. That was affirming to me and very educational, Debbie. Thanks. Onward then to table topics. And Quan Lu will be leading us in table topics today. He told me that he very recently met his three month old niece for the first time. He had such a good time with her and her three year old brother last week. Oh, how just precious. That's the age difference between my two grandchildren too. So. I don't know. It's just the best. I, it just makes life so good. I'm so happy for you. So he said that spring feels much better with these two children. And I'm just, I know that. I just know that. Boy. So please welcome Quan Lu as Table Topics Master today. Quan. Thank you, Gretchen. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I agree with you about the comment you have for Debbie's speech. And I really enjoy it. And, you know, we need a lot of empathy in the world today. And I, I'm glad you that you have that speech today. Back to the table topic, um, as you know, the, the opportunity for us to do impromptu speech uh, to improve the ability to think on your feet. And as usual, um, many people have a different way to do this, but I keep uh, it traditional um, by just having some random question and um, you get to answer the questions. And also, um, I just need to need time to recover from the fever I have a, a, with these two children. So that's why when I, I might interpret uh, your uh, questions theme about spring into action a little bit different um, because with my feeling about those children, life all good, and I thought about <laughs> spring, so a little bit different, but my question is about spring. Um, 
and I promise it's this easy question. So I need, I have a, a Madam Toastmaster, do how many questions do I have, you think? I have a four question, but <laughs> you don't have a time. <laughs> I get. I go ahead and do four, and if uh, at any time you want to stop, um, let me know. Yeah, do four. I now I finally found my phone. It is oh. twelve twenty nine. So um, that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, I got four. I uh, need four volunteers, and okay, Evan, and then Lonnie. Joanna, that's what I have in my, if you don't volunteer, I will volunteer. <laughs> and I need one more. Um, just go ahead and do three now and at the, let me know if you, how about Gretchen, you do number four, <laughs> if we have a time. Okay. <laughs> so the first question I have for, um, Evan, is what activities do you enjoy to do during spring? Thank you, Kwong, fellow Toastmasters. Spring is a really great time for me because I like warmer weather. So the transition from winter to spring is definitely a time of great excitement. I also love basketball and spring is definitely basketball time. So we have a basketball net in our driveway, but I haven't used it in probably six months. So I'm excited to pull out our cars, call my daughter out of the house and shoot some hoops with her. So that's the most fun. Then we also love to walk. Our home is just outside of downtown on the east side near the water tower. So we're able to walk many places downtown. It's about 10 minutes to get into the 15 minutes maybe to get into the heart of downtown Olympia. So it's fun for us to go ahead and, and walk maybe to the lake, walk around the lake once, come on back home, but it really gives us a nice opportunity to stretch our legs, to get more steps. I've realized that I'm not getting enough steps lately. And so we actually purchased pedometers and my goal is to get 10,000 steps per day. That's what I do during springtime, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, Evan. That sounds really good. Uh, Lonnie, your question is, let me pull it up, I forget. Would you prefer to have only spring all year long? Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Spring all year long. I don't think that would work. Uh, there are many reasons why we have seasons and uh, it just wouldn't work. I, and plus, I need my fall. I need my mushroom season. I recently found some morels on a walk just a few days ago, maybe 15 feet from my, my driveway. And that was pretty wonderful to, to be exposed to in this season. So while there are mushrooms in the spring, there are many more mushrooms in the fall. And I, I tend to get a bit of more of a fall fever than a spring fever. Uh, for the mushroom seasons and the changing of the weather. Uh, personally, I do like colder weather than warmer weather. 70 degrees is fine, but much more than that. And uh, my face gets red from being burned and I, I don't like to sweat. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lonnie. And Joanna, your question is, 
what your favorite season of the year? Thank you, Kwan, and hello, Toastmasters. My favorite season seems to be changing constantly. Um, as you probably know, I moved back to Washington after seven years in San Diego, where it's always 65 to 75 and is glorious. It is. The summers are cooler than there than here, but the winters are warmer and just perfect all the time. You can go for a run, walk, but it is very dry. We don't, they didn't have the mountains and the river. Oh, well, there's mountains, but they're dry. Rivers and the lakes and all the lush green beauty like Washington. So we can't have the lush green beauty without the rain and the gray, which are the, was the worst season. The worst season is November late November to February. <laughs> that's, that's what I vacation, vacation, vacation leave. Um, I would say my favorite season here in Washington is definitely like right now until September. It's so beautiful. And I just being back two years, I'm appreciating so much more than when I grew up here and I didn't, I took it for granted. So seeing the spring and all the flowers blooming right now, and I'm doing, I did a uh, hike dog mountain a couple weeks ago, got to that, which is on the Columbia Gorge on the border of Washington, Oregon, got to the top. It was the last person on the mountain, went down in the dark and um, wildflowers, purple, blue, mm -hmm. yellow, yeah, uh, just over the whole mountaintop and then you're overlooking the whole gorge and the Columbia River. So beautiful. So that for spring, all the flowers blooming are just so pretty. And this, okay, this year has been beautiful. And then summer, of course, the lakes and the rivers and the tubing and like, oh, it's all I can't wait. I have so many plans. And then the fall, I forgot how beautiful fall is. So I don't know, they're all just so awesome. Just, I hate November to February. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joanna. And I have a one more question and Gretchen, I don't didn't mean to pick on you, but you approve of four question and I'm thinking you one of the best speaker in the group too. <laughs> to have this question answered. <laughs> okay. And uh, I have a, the last question for you. Uh, where would you want to go on? your next spring vacation oh my gosh how am i good for this one you know i am so like into the farm work that i do that i can't even imagine a spring vacation right now so Let's see, if I was to go on a spring vacation, I, I, I just want to be here. I cannot answer that question because I just want to be here. And that's been the case for about the last, this is the third year now. Uh, we are so busy and you know how our climate, it's cold, 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 all the way through March, all the way through April, cold, cold, and then all of a sudden, like right now, boom, everything happened. Everything is warm, 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 hot. Now you have to, now you have to protect things from the heat and blah, blah. Yeah, but before you had to protect from the cold. Now you have to protect from the heat. That's one thing about spring here that just, uh, you can't, you can hardly plan. Well, yesterday we talked about, okay, planning or taking notes about all the things that need to go in, when and the covers. I see the green, thank you, Michael, and <laughs> the covers over the plants and then when to take them off and when we plant from seedling to field and all that. And we, were, we decided we we're gonna get a great big whiteboard and put on the, on the wall where the deck is. And we're going to have uh, weekly projects that we have to take care of. And then we'll be ready for this huge explosion, this fever of the weather is just going nuts around this time every year. So we'll be prepared for it. So vacation, are you kidding me? This is vacation every day of the week, every month lately. I just love, love, love it. <laughs> Thank you, Gretchen. You're doing a good job. I always enjoy you know, your speech. Um, and everybody doing a good job too. You guys um, 
so improve in the way you handle the uh, impromptu question. I, I learned a lot from you guys, but now it's time for me to introduce the evaluator. Um, let's transition to the evaluation part. And I forgot who the evaluator, general evaluator is. <laughs> Michelle, uh, please help me to welcome Michelle as a general <laughs> evaluator. Thank you very much, Kwong. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. I am happy to be here. Now, if you think I've been quietly sitting in the background during this meeting and judging you all, you're correct, because as general evaluator, that's my job. I am here to pay close attention and provide some feedback on how the meeting went so that we can all keep getting better and having great meetings going into the future. But before you get my take of everything, we're going to start with our evaluation of Debbie's speech. And our speech evaluator today is Evan. So let's all welcome Evan to give a Great evaluation, or oh, maybe he'll be really hard this time. We'll see. We'll see what's in store. <laughs> and uh, anyway, to Evan. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, <laughs> fellow Toastmasters. It is my honor and privilege to evaluate the Debbie Roberts today. Let's see if I can bring up what I need to bring up with my fancy computer without having to look in many different directions. All right, I think I figured it out, great. Debbie, I really enjoyed your speech. I was completely wrong about empathy and sympathy. Not completely, but relatively wrong. It was like I had a fever and I didn't know anything. <laughs> I really appreciated a number of things about your speech. So initially asking a question, I'm always a big fan of this because that immediately engages people. You had a good pace to your speech. The rhythm was good. You are articulate. You were definitely comfortable with the material. You had good hand movements. I remember specifically you talked about tearing down that wall. I think if you were standing, it would have been a little bit more obvious, your hand motions and your gestures. I really liked the examples that you gave and the stories. I think that was a a point in the speech where it could have gone a little bit, we could have spaced out a little bit as listeners and you brought us right back in with the stories, which I thought was great. And then I'm always a big fan of practical tips and the tips that you offered at the end, listening without interruptions, giving your full attention, avoiding the fixes, which is something that I commonly do in my relationship with my wife. Or I try to avoid the fixes. Don't fix me, just listen to me, but engage with me. Make sure you're, you're still here, you're present with me, right? So those were all really important and staying out of judgment. And then the information on the, on the books and the video by Brene Brown. So I'm definitely gonna check that out. There's no doubt you have passion for this topic. And I really liked your vocal variety as well. So your, your voice was moving up and down. You made good eye contact. And the topic was definitely interesting. Things that you may want to work on, you may want to consider standing. You may want to become a little bit more comfortable with pauses. So there were times when you had some pauses and you didn't necessarily feel comfortable with those. One of the things that you could have done is maybe make notes on your transitions. You know, where part of your outline and some of the stuff that maybe you'll bold are going to be those transition sections. So they jump out at you so that you can look down very quickly or whatever you're using to know what's next. And then the last thing I would say breathing, which is something I think we all need to do when we're giving speeches, is that we forget to breathe. We forget to breathe deeply and then that actually increases anxiety. And I would say you can challenge yourself with positive self-talk. So in the beginning, when we were talking about speech and recording, you, know, you were doing this, and I don't know whether you were kidding maybe, but you are an excellent speaker. 
And you need to know that you're an excellent speaker. And so before you, anytime you have any negative self-talk about this, where it's like, oh, I'm not going to do well or whatever it is, you need to remind yourself, I am an excellent speaker and I'm going to kick the, you know what, out of this speech. So that is my evaluation. And I will put the link to this evaluation in the chat box for you to review at your convenience. Fellow Toastmasters. Thanks so much, Evan, for that really great feed, um, feedback for Debbie. You know, Debbie, Debbie gave such a fantastic speech. I was curious what kind of constructive feedback we would be able to offer her. But those are some really good pointers about breathing and transitions. They can be things that are easy to overlook. So I appreciate that. And given that you are a professional at helping people overcome challenges, I'm really looking forward to hearing some more of your evaluations going forward. So that was the beginning of my general evaluation. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And then later on, I will get reports from the Augermarian and the Temer vote calendar. So I found this to be a very moving meeting. You know, sometimes we have these meetings that are filled with such thoughtful comments that you find yourself thinking about them after it wraps up. And for me, this was one of those kinds of meetings. I think that started with how thoughtful Gretchen was about noticing that we did not have a Toastmaster for the meeting yesterday and really just taking the lead, springing into action and, uh, and getting that going. So thank you so much, Gretchen, for that. And also the theme springing into action is fantastic because you modeled that behavior and you're encouraging us, you're reinforcing us <laughs> to also spring into action in the context of Toastmasters perhaps and also volunteering for roles in the future um, or in other contexts in the life. And so what you said about you have to show up to experience a situation at all, that really resonates. And I'm going to keep that in mind because sometimes I don't show up for things because I'm a little shy. Debbie, your speech was also really moving. I feel like I have been a bit overwhelmed with so much bad news from the people in my community. And it gets hard to keep demonstrating empathy, especially if I'm busy or I'm tired or I'm just like, how many times do I have to say, like, I'm so sorry for your loss, but, you know, Empathy is like an intentional decision. And if you want to be a kind, decent human being, you know, even whatever the, you're going through, it's worth taking a break and thinking about what it feels like for someone else. So I do appreciate that reminder because I honestly can, can be better at that myself. Um, going back to the top of my notes here. Oh, we've got Chris. Chris, I really liked what you told us today that you were going to focus on some of the more positive aspects of language use instead of just finding flaws. I thought that is a nice challenge. I don't know if I will actually succeed in doing that. You can tell me in a few minutes. Timer vote counter. That was Michael. Thank you for that clear explanation of your duties and your funny props. Very cool. Lonnie, again, a really interesting take here. Instead of just telling some canned joke, you talked from your personal experience and told a story and a joke that really resonated with you. And I think that's super effective and I hope to see more of that in the future. So nice job. Debbie, I already told you, I think your speech was great. Um, Evan gave you good feedback on that. So I'll just keep moving forward. Table topics. Kwong, I also really appreciate your commentary. I didn't write exactly what it was, but you said a couple things. So I thought, oh, that's sweet. And I, I just, I really appreciate you being here and being open and, and sharing your feelings like that because it really sets a tone. All of the table topics, you, you all did such a good job at feeling you came across as comfortable and warm and brought a lot of personality to the to the topics. Um, so I enjoyed them very much. Thank you very much. And am I forgetting anything? No, I think I think that covers it all. So it's been a very good meeting from my end and we will now transition to reports from our Augermarian and Timer Vote Counter. So first up is our Augur Marion. Is it too late to say fever? Fever, fever, fever. <laughs> Chris Keegan. 
never too late. I think that's why you decided to do yours before mine. I think you knew you hadn't used fever yet. You were one of the few who did not. Most everybody found a way to include that in their talk somewhere, which is good because like Gretchen pointed out, that's not an easy word to try to find to fill in here and there. So good job, everyone. And I'd like to go back to several months ago when I had to do this before. And I mentioned that Gretchen, she doesn't use a lot of ahs and ums or anything else, but she likes to laugh. That's her filler. It's not really a filler. As somebody reminded me a month or so after that, if it adds to the talk, it's good. And so I like to say that not only does Gretchen do it, Michelle, you picked up on that. You laugh a lot. And I think that really adds to this meeting quite a bit. So I think the rest of us need to work on that so we can laugh with everyone else. I think it's good for all of us. You know, most of the day we're just doing work. Here I think we can bond a little bit. And that laugh really makes us a lot closer. So I think great job, everyone. And just about everybody used the word fever, so that was great. A couple of things, things I didn't probably didn't need to know about Lonnie. He doesn't like to sweat. I didn't know that before, but you know, that was one of the things she threw in there. Personally, I don't see how you can go out and be hiking or looking for fungi without sweating some. I suppose just cooler weather, maybe that's the only time you go. But other than that, if you want to find stuff later on, you're going to sweat a little bit. A couple of things uh, that people are doing, I have to say, because I did this for Kelly, she has a tendency to do a little every so often. So I mentioned that, kind of embarrassed her a little bit. But a couple of you uh, use instead kind of a little tisk for a period. You know who you are, just remember that. And since we're recording it, you can check the, re the record and see if you did. So just kind of a little warning there. If you, if you go through this, you may, you may find yourself there. So. Well, thanks everyone. That's all, all I have. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for that great report, Chris. Next up, we have our timer vote counter, Michael Wynn. Let's welcome Michael. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. So, Debbie, you were a little bit over at seven minutes, 56 seconds, just on your book review in your book. The comments on the books, I, I've read Dare to Lead. It's a great book. I would also recommend that to everyone. Evan, you were one minute, 40 seconds. Lonnie, one minute, four seconds. Joanna, one minute, 55 seconds. And Gretchen, one minute, 58 seconds. So everyone qualified for the table topics and got in within the time limits. And Evan, I'm guesstimating your time on on the evaluation. I forgot to start my timer, but I'm guessing it was three minutes, 26 seconds. <laughs> so you also were within the time, if I judge that correctly. <laughs> but yeah, that's my timer's report. And thank you, Michelle. All right, thanks, Michael. I'm gonna hand this meeting back over to Gretchen. Okay, well, it has been a really nice meeting. We all bring such joy and pleasure, I think, when we come to meetings. I, I know that all, every for every one of us, every day isn't wonderful, but I think we all come to this meeting acting like it is, you know? And I remember when, we had meetings in the building and we will again, but, and when I was working uh, at a job and we'd say to each other, you know, work was horrible, but then I came here and it was just an oasis from that, from that ugh, stuff at work. <laughs> anyway, I can't even think of a good adjective right now, <laughs> but you know, all the politics and all that stuff. Anyway, the meetings were always a reprieve from that. And I was always glad I went to a meet to a Toastmasters meeting, even though I kind of thought, ooh, I just, I don't want to go right now, you know, but then I'd go and I felt totally, totally different after the meeting. That's one thing the meetings do for us. And that's one 
good thing about having a meeting in the middle of the day. Not all Toastmasters clubs have meetings in the middle of the day. In fact, I think we're in the minority about on that. But anyway, yeah, great, good feeling meeting today. I agree with Michelle. <laughs> oh, first thing I'm supposed to do to close the meeting is to announce the winner of the table topics today. And that would be da 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 da. Lonnie, congratulations. Yes, yes. I think we all enjoyed hearing you don't like to sweat, I guess. <laughs> it was very good. Everybody did great, though. What's next? Comments for the good of the order. Anybody have any comments to, uh, in, for general? Michael? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to do one last mention about the officers for.